Well, hello and welcome to District Dialogue. I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Now, today on District Dialogue, we've got some entertaining conversation that I think you'll enjoy. We're gonna be talking about growth and finances and kind of how they all come together. Now, this is gonna be an interesting conversation, so you might wanna stick around and, and pull up a, a chair and, and kind of enjoy this moment. And I've brought some experts around to talk with you guys about this. I've got my finance director who's here. I've got the planning and zoning director who's here, who can really kind of see how all these things come together and why. So with that, I'll let them introduce themselves and then we'll get right into the meat of it. Starting with Ms. Rosalind Miller. Hello, my name is Rosalind Miller and I'm the director of finance. And if I can get one person to be involved with the budget process for um, 2023, um, for 2024's budget, I think I would be extremely excited. <laughs> also, I would um, like to um, see, to show you um, with growth mm -hmm. and the budget, how they um, affect each other. And then also um, transparency, where you can find some financial reports or, you know, just to get you started for being involved in the budget of 2024. Great introduction, Ms. Right. Allison. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Allison Duncan. I'm the planning and zoning manager for Douglas County. And I'm excited to be a part of this dialogue today because what we do in planning and zoning is so centrally connected to how we are able to make financial decisions for Douglas County. So I hope that through our conversation today, we can relate to the process for making decisions for growth and development and how that translates into tax dollars for Douglas County. I hope that people will be able to see that we do have a plan for balanced growth in Douglas County. We do have a plan to manage our population growth for D Douglas County, and that the overall outcome um, of these growth management policies uh, will translate into better uh, fiscal management for the county overall, better environmental conservation protection for the county overall, and just improved quality of life for Douglas County overall going forward. So a I'm absolutely. excited to be a part of this conversation today. Absolutely, so with that, let's kind of start on the, the, the Allison, on the, the growth on the industrial, on that side of things. And then we're gonna tie those dollars and cents in and how that all kind of come together. And then the population will, hopefully the district dialogue family will understand kind of what this is all about though. So let's start with the, let's say industrial growth. Sure you know. thing, mm -hmm. sure thing. So we hear a lot of feedback um, about how much industrial growth that we have experienced in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. And we have experienced a lot of industrial growth. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, some graphics that we'll share with you that show that we are part of uh, the Metro Atlanta region where we have taken a fair amount of industrial growth that's part of what you see along uh, Fulton Industrial Boulevard um, in Fulton County, going all the way up to the intermodal yards in Cobb County, right? So we've taken a lot of industrial growth uh, along State Route 6 in that area. So when you see the increase in truck traffic, when you see the increased industrial growth, um, that is part of a regional uh, plan to kind of concentrate um, some geographic clustering among things like uh, warehouse distribution. Um, those were some major economic development sectors that were identified you know, as having major strengths for Douglas County. Um, we've seen a lot of growth in data centers, mm -hmm. right? So every time we take a picture you know, on our phone, we upload it to the cloud and things like that, we have to think about you know, kind of how we um, are managing all of our data storage and things like that. You know, so we've seen a lot of growth in those sectors and that was identified as a part of our economic development strategy for the county, right? And so it's important that we have that industrial growth um, in this area so that we can offset the tax impact you know, to correct. our residents in Douglas County. Um, but when we look at our long-term plan, we also think it's important that we concentrate it in an area so that we don't have it spread all over the county so that we can make sure that we're planning for balanced growth in areas where we need to preserve our stable single family residential neighborhoods, mm -hmm. where we need to preserve our environmentally sensitive neighborhoods, but we also wanna make sure that we're balancing our tax digest so that our residents don't have to bear the full burden you know, of the taxes that are required to help fund our services in a Douglas County. Key factor, key factor, you're absolutely correct, is that it's a balancing act. And balancing that becomes very interesting when you're talking about growth and balancing that growth economically when we're talking about commercial and then we're talking residential. And with that, let, let's tie it all in with the, the finances side of this because sometimes people get confused as to why is my value so high or why my taxes are higher and why, why, why? But here are some things that balance that with economic development commercial wise that helps out mm -hmm. on the residential side. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so and when you think of commercial, you have to understand commercial, they're going to bring in real property, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and their property is going to be a lot higher. So therefore, the revenue, it's more revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. And um, just like Allison uh, mentioned, mm -hmm. it does um, reduce some of the burden for the residential um, homeowner. So when we see commercial, it does help with your um, revenue and also your um, tax um, digest. But with that, um, the more commercial you receive, you know, you have um, need services. Um, you need more fire stations. That's correct. Um, but you need uh, police patrol um, vehicles, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the jail. It's, it's a, um, the more you receive in our people, the population, mm -hmm. it takes more to uh, run a government. Absolutely. That's why I, I, we was talking earlier about, you know, when you're trying to look at the splost penny that we are dealing with as of today. And that penny adds up to uh, a senior citizen center. It adds up to a community center, a new fire station, and so on. But it also adds up on the, on the operational cost of things that we don't, as commissioners, we really need to pay attention to that. Sometimes we look at the brick and mortar and all the shiny objects, but forget about the cost of running and operating that. So that part, it ties in, correct? Yeah, that, that is a huge um, factor because on some, when you're looking at the um, lost projects, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you want to look at the projects that will not increase your operation. Like mm -hmm. if you purchase a truck, mm -hmm. it's not going to um, increase your um, bottom line budget too much. Mm -hmm. But if you purchase or um, build, a fire, build a fire station, station okay. yes, you're talking about millions of dollars that yes. you have to pay for the staffing, mm -hmm. you have to pay for um, the fire um, trucks. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that adds to your um, bottom line and that's a good point because one, I think the new fire station is going to come aboard on 2024. So in the fire um, budget, you will see an increase of about I think about two million dollars roughly. Is, that is correct. Yeah, th that's my estimate right. number. Yeah, but but that number will come on board, and then you got to look at okay, so now how do we pay for that service? If we're not mm -hmm. balancing, as you guys spoke about earlier when we're dealing with uh, the commercial side of things and the residential side of things, if this community was strictly residential, it'll be on the backs of the resident side of things, Absolutely. The, the housing market, basically. Right, and I think but, one thing that is also good to add to the conversation about Splost is mm -hmm. that Splost is something that earns revenue not just from residents in Douglas County, right? Correct. But yeah. from people oh, coming yes. outside of Douglas right. County who are coming and paying that portion you know, of the penny. And I think it's also important to identify, you know, that another area that we do bring in um, revenue to the county is in collecting, you know, permits and fees, mm -hmm. um, sure. occupational oh, tax yes. licenses yes. or business licenses or alcohol licenses. And sometimes that gets overlooked. We focus mm -hmm. a lot, you know, just on those property taxes. But I think it's another area where our commercial and our industrial growth does contribute to the overall health, you know, of our digest. And I do think that that is, you know, something where the county has done a good job of being mindful of diversifying, you know, our income streams, you know, for revenue. And we do give that, you know, some consideration when we're considering about growth and development and where that absolutely. needs yeah, to go. You're absolutely right. Because um, during COVID, those revenues absolutely. were down, but we are actually seeing them increase. But the splash pity was up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> because a lot of the online, right? Well, you know, online the and increase people and, and the the people at home. Inflation, yes, too. inflation kind of. Yeah, so inflation. so there's a whole lot of things that goes along with when we talk in finances and and, and development. Yeah, that not only sometimes adds a cost or an expense, mm -hmm. but also add a revenue side of things. Yeah. So there's some good and bad and give and take that <laughs> right. we all have to keep understanding. Yeah. And that's what this, is, this conversation is all about, the understanding of all of that and, and the need. We're popu our population now is growing, I mean, rapidly. In that growth side of things, in the population side of it, it will also increase, like we just talked about, police, fire, and everything else mm -hmm. that will come along with that that will also in increase what I call property tax and or assess values. Mm -hmm. Right. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, right. right. Property growth, or excuse me, population growth is one of those 
things that we also keep an eye on, you know, our mm -hmm. growth rate. And so, um, so we have some information that's been shared with us that shows that, that Metro Atlanta has grown overall at a rate of about 1.2% annually over the last 10 years. So when we look at the census data between 2010 and 2020, we mm -hmm. see that Metro Atlanta overall has grown at a rate of about 1.2%. Now Douglas County has grown at a rate of 1.7%. Mm -hmm. It seems like a small distinction, but we are growing at a population rate higher, higher. than Metro Atlanta overall. Wow. Right, so I think what that means is that we're seeing increased opportunities for our suburban communities that mm -hmm. maybe you know we hadn't seen previously, um, and I think Douglas County, you know, is kind of right there poised to accept some of that growth because we do have this you know pretty incredible quality of life and people are starting to appreciate you know the opportunities you know that we have here, but we do have to balance that you know yes. with the desire to keep our rural character, to, perturb, to preserve our environmentally sensitive areas. Mm -hmm. um, but we also know that our residents are asking us for certain you know, services, certain amenities, that you're only gonna come with an increase in rooftops. Right, um, but, but not always mm -hmm. now. The rooftops is not the, the, the only key factor or main factor. There's a couple other income. You know, um, oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, fair. Yeah, so so there's a there's a there's some, several other factors yeah. that you've got to factor in, and rooftops is just not the only one. What I'm getting at, so right. that's agree. what residents probably need to understand, though, that there's other factors that, you know, Joe Blow's business shop decides to want to come here because it's just not that you got several houses in the community. Yeah, it's right. also with that income. It's a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. that fact, and 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 speak on that. I mean. Cause that's a that's a key factor though yeah and i and i'm and you probably can speak more but um yeah i know that when um businesses are you know interviewing other counties or stuff there is a, a list of things that they uh, look for and i often hear you know well why don't we have a trader joe's or mm -hmm. but it's criteria that that um company they you know look at so it's nothing that um i guess the you know, board of commissioners or anybody mm -hmm. saying, no, you can't come. Right. It's what they, that business is looking sure. for. Right. Well, that's um, to the best yield to your dollar, now that you jump in this, it's the yield to that company's dollar is what exactly. they're, they're really it, looking at. So it, they're, right. they're interviewing several, um, I guess, counties yes. or cities as to why, and, and more or less, why not? Right. I need to be here. So that, that's a whole other, and then we'll get into abatements, but go ahead. Okay. Well, and I was just going to add, when we look at the types of industries that we do recruit to Douglas County, we do want to be, again, mindful of that balance, right? Because yes. we do want to make sure that we're recruiting industries that have a wage that will translate, you know, into the kind of income projections that will help us maintain an overall, you know, kind of healthy, you know, balance in our services and our digest, mm -hmm. right? And so when you look at some of those, you know, industries that, you know, may have kind of lower wage, you know, brackets, um, that's something that's going to translate into the types of businesses that you can recruit into Douglas County. Mm -hmm. um, so that as we plan for growth, you know, we look at those sectors, you know, where we want to see a little bit of maybe kind of higher target wages, you mm -hmm. know, so that those are the jobs that we're bringing here. But we also want to make sure that we're balancing that with our workforce characteristics, Correct. right? So that the people here, you know, kind of have the education and training for the jobs that we have available. Um, so I think that we're always kind of trying to push, you know, the bar a little bit to make sure that we're challenging ourselves, you know, but we want to be mindful you know, of kind of the workforce that we have, you know, here as we're trying to balance, you know, all of those needs. But we, we give incentives to, to, to bring your, your employment here yes. uh, with the hopes that you'll hire Douglas Countyans. There are incentives there. I know there's abatements that some of us tend to like, you know, shy right. away from, but just understand that's that balancing act again. Yeah. Right, right. If, if that business so chooses to come, he or she has also looked at several counties as to why and why not, and abatements is gonna be one of those. Right. One of those factors. And you just uh, Workforce is gonna yeah. be one of those factors. Especially if the starting wage is 60,000 a Correct. year, it's, mm -hmm. you, you weigh it off. Absolutely. You know, and yeah, some, the tax abatement, because you are abating their taxes, their property tax. So not forever. Not forever. Yeah. It's usually, the, the longest is maybe 10 years That is correct. Or so, mm -hmm. and, and it's also it's, on a it, scale. It's staggered. Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. But you're getting so much, the Board of Commissioners and um, everyone, the Development Authority, everyone looks at these agreements and they make sure that it's a benefit you know, to the county. They make sure that... Um, there is a number of um, 
you know, people that live in Douglas County will get the jobs and mm -hmm. the higher paid um, jobs. We can't guarantee that. Right. But we, we can at least push that yeah. employer and they in have that to direction. On it. And they got to report yeah, on they it. Because it's part of the abatement. If you do X, we expect Z. You know, that and correct. that's kind of the factors yeah. that we that we all look at to ensure that we're doing all we can as commissioners to ensure that whatever comes here, it fits. Right. It's within our plan uh, use plan of, of the future, and it makes sense. And hopefully, it makes sense for Douglas Countyans. So, no. Well, we've just had a great you know kind of community engagement process through a comprehensive plan update. Um, so I want to kind of put in a plug, you know, yes. we're kind of, we're mm -hmm. halfway through our comprehensive plan update, wow. you know, and we're looking for kind of that final round of community engagement to take a look at our land use plan, to take a look at our math and tell us, you know, if we've heard your feedback correctly. Um, and I think it's very relevant to this conversation because we have had a lot of feedback from the community about what their vision is, you know, going forward. So mm -hmm. we have heard you on the industrial traffic and on the truck traffic, you know, and so we understand that as we plan for future growth in these sectors, we need to really kind of keep that contained, you yes. know, to a specific yes. area. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in terms of like kind of the jobs that we want to see and the kind of amenities that we want to see, we've heard people say that, you know, we'd like to have more things to do, right? Mm -hmm. We would like to have more retail, more restaurants, mm -hmm. more shops, mm -hmm. you know, so we've really you know, looked for those day in and day out zoning decisions, you know, those long meetings where we have, where we go mm -hmm. case by case and we look at, you know, whether we're gonna, you know, approve a project. And we've really taken the community's input to heart, mm -hmm. you know, as we make our staff recommendations. And I know mm -hmm. that the planning and zoning board and the board of commissioners, yes. you know, are considering, you know, all of those things as we make those decisions. And so that's why our community engagement has been so valuable, mm -hmm. you know, because we are trying to take their vision and translate it into action, you know, that ultimately will impact, you know, the mm -hmm. overall tax digest and our ability to. So Allison, and talk about that though. So let's talk about why we do our best at trying to invite, encourage community involvement. That's important to not only the commissioners, but to those that come to hear and see what the future of Douglas County could be. But if you don't show up, then you kind of miss the mark when you come to when the planning and zoning or when we're making that decision is more or less being finalized. Right. When you come to the voting session, it's kind of over and done with. Right. Talk about when you guys are having these meetings, prior meetings, planning meetings to get to this point, even with the whole land use plan. Right. We're talking about that now. Right. Yes. I mean, absolutely. I think it's one of the best ways to get a return on your investment in Douglas County, mm -hmm. right? So folks are always kind of wanting to see, well, what are my tax dollars paying for, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, and how are these investments being spent? And one of the things that I actually love about zoning is that under state law, right, the public has a voice in the process. Yes. It is one of those unique areas in government mm -hmm. in that the public gets to come to the meeting and we set aside a time on every application for the public to have a say. Mm -hmm. We go beyond that on our zoning applications and we set aside time for community information meetings in advance of it every zoning hearing so mm -hmm. the public can come, you know, and they can ask those questions about any application that's coming into the community. Um, so I would really encourage people to come out, get involved, right? Because every decision that is made on a zoning application is a decision that translates into tax dollars, you know, for and, the county. And you guys got a plan, and I know, I know you probably don't want to put you on the spot to know the entire schedule, but there's a schedule where you can maybe send uh, district dialogue viewers to kind of go and see the plan of when and where these meetings will transpire and become a, become a part of it, get Absolutely. engaged. Yeah. Absolutely, it's on our website. If you go to celebratedouglascounty.com and you go to the planning and zoning page of our website, we've tried to be very transparent about the entire process from beginning to end. Um, we do have the schedule up there now for uh, the dates between now and the end of April where mm -hmm. you can come to town halls, you can come you know, to planning and zoning open house hours, you can have access to that whole process. There's an online survey that you can kind of review all of the materials online and give us your feedback. So we would really encourage everybody, you know, to do that, you know, and participate in that process. Um, because again, it's just one example of where you absolutely have access to those incremental decisions, those day in and day out decisions that immediately translate into dollars for this county and how they are spent. Now that's planning and zoning. Talk about the transparency when it comes to the budget. The, the layout and where you post it online and all this other good stuff where they can kind of get engaged and see where their dollars are being spent. Yes, and with Allison, I think um, with even with the budget process mm -hmm. that you can um, actually tailor the budget mm -hmm. where um, you feel um, you know, a need, or if you see um, overcharge, you have a right to uh, question it yes. or ask the board to reduce the number. But I think it's at the, the time that we usually um, see um, comments when the budget has already been approved. So 
One thing is that Douglas County is on a calendar year mm -hmm. for um, their financials, meaning um, January through December, and so that's what um, the budget. Mm -hmm. So we will um, be doing, starting um, the budget for 2024, um, in June. Mm -hmm. So from, from June until December of um, 2023, the um, citizens can come in and request um, for the um, draft budget, mm -hmm. have um, questions, can ask the board members um, for, we put it on um, the website mm -hmm. under the um, finance. Mm -hmm and also monthly reports like if you want to see how douglas county is doing for, for uh, first quarter our first quarter um, financial monthly financial mm -hmm. reports are also on um, online too that you can um, see the progress mm -hmm. and actually um, the county is running under budget about two percent um, based off of um, trending i think we're actually doing really good but most kind of think that we're not because I guess their property taxes have went up because um, they're not seeing that restaurant that they want to see in town or uh, they seeing more truck traffic and all that good stuff. But a lot of that is not just in the finances on, on our books. It's more in the in the layout of your assessed value of your properties. And the good thing is your assessed values are going up. Right. Now, you can always address that with the Board of Equalization, I think it is. Yes. But, but again, that's not a millage rate increase. Let's talk about that. The millage rate increase versus the, the uh, assessed value and even rollbacks. So they can kind of understand kind of what that really is. Okay. Um, so <laughs> let's say if you, um, your home, and then let's think that it did not increase at all. Your, your value is the same. And the Board of Commissioners, they do not raise the millage rate. That means your tax bill is going to be the same. Everything is the same. So let's, stay, let's say that if um, your value does increase mm -hmm. and the Board of Commissioners, they still don't raise it. It's, they keep it the same. Your taxes is going to be higher. Mm -hmm. And it's because your value is higher. So, um, and it's a, it's a formula, you know, it's the millage rate. Not a formula that we create as a board of commissioners. Right. That's a state, this is a state. Okay. The, it's state okay. and okay. also okay. a separate um, board. The, um, we have the tax, um, the chief um, tax appraiser. appraiser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He actually um, calculates your value mm -hmm. and um, he, he reports to a separate board. So the um, governing authority, the board of co uh, commissioners cannot um, direct him in any way. He That's has correct. his own board. That's correct. So he comes with the value and he provides that value to the tax commissioner and then the tax commissioner quantifies it, tells us how much in dollars. Mm -hmm. And then from there, finance has to back in. Whatever the number is, finance has to back into that number. It's no adding. It's no, oh, we need more. We need less. It's no, no, but you, you can, though, like I stated earlier, you can, you can kind of go in and talk about to someone about the value yes. to the Board of Equalization oh, and say, yeah. hey, my value is too appeal. high. Yes. My, my, my value is too high, so I would like to do uh, a reassessment of my right. property. And uh, I encourage that. Absolutely. If your bill is, you'll receive a sample bill, you'll get, it says, this is not a bill, do not pay it. And it'll tell you your estimated um, tax bill, what it, what it would be. And if you feel that your value has increased, but you don't, your neighbors has not, then you can um, appeal it. And I encourage that. Even if your neighbor appeal. did or didn't, but if you want to appeal, appeal yes. that you have that right. Yes, you but have that right. but the, the confusion is that the millage rate was increased as to why my taxes are high. You raised my taxes. It's well, just the value. It's the value. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we also have a supply and demand challenge going on yes. right now oh, with yes. housing. Right. Right? And yes. I think yeah. we'd be remiss if we didn't kind of touch on that. You're and that right. is a statewide supply and demand challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have some data that we can share that basically seems odd that we would be going back to the Great Recession of 2008. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what happened in 2008 mm -hmm. when everything just kind of hit a hard stop, mm -hmm. you know, when it came, you know, to housing. Mm -hmm. So in the 2010s, we just delivered a fraction of housing statewide, right? And we're still kind of making up for that, mm -hmm. right? So that when you look at kind of every decade since the 1960s, 
we're not delivering anywhere near as much housing, you know, in terms of issuance and building permits mm -hmm. as we have since even the 1960s, mm -hmm. you know. And so we're starting to kind of see the impact of that catching up with us is there's been steady population growth, you know, but we're not bringing enough housing units Correct. online statewide, not enough inventory to meet that demand, you wow. know. And that's a, that's a combination of many factors, you right. know. It's how hard it is to get a loan to build housing. It's how hard it is to get a loan to buy housing. There's some kind of artificial inflation going on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from investor-owned properties, you mm -hmm. know, that are kind of driving up what otherwise would be entry-level, you know, housing price points. So there's a lot of things going on in our housing market right now. But that is one of the other things, you know, that we're seeing that's not, you know, necessarily impacting the millage, but it's impacting the value. Yes. You know, because yes. your value is based on what similarly situated houses are selling for. The and they are selling at some very unique numbers. Right, sure. <laughs> and it's like, wow. So the, there's a good to this, meaning the good is that you want the value of your property to be higher. The downside is I don't want to pay the taxes on a higher value. Right. So you, you can't kind of... It's that balance. <laughs> right. It's that balance. <laughs> that balance. Yeah. So, so. so Allison, I, I mean, maybe one of you guys could talk about, I mean, because there's been some reassessments that's going on in, in the commercial side of things that the Board of Assessors have actually been out. And I know they started with the commercial side of things, but, you know, in, in the housing market as well. And then there's affordable housing and that, there's a combination of stuff that's infusing all of this. You know, and where we are, I don't know. We have to just kind of take it day by day with the rates going in one direction and the, 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 the market that and the need is going in a different direction. So I don't know where in the middle where you meet to kind of balance this, but maybe you guys have, the experts can. <laughs> so one thing I would share in regard to housing specifically, okay. and it's not so much to do with assessment, assessment but it, it's more focused on kind of making sure that we um, are keeping an eye on safe, stable, secure housing stock in Douglas County, right? So in our department, we've been very focused on doing housing inventory, working with our code enforcement department, you know, to assess those neighborhoods um, that are doing okay, but maybe some where they've had some code challenges, some minimum maintenance challenges, mm -hmm. you know, and making sure that we are responding to the feedback we've heard from the community that, hey, we, we like our neighborhood. We're attached to our neighborhood. There's mm -hmm. maybe a couple of houses here mm -hmm. that we sort of need to see them do a little bit of work to maintain the overall standard, mm -hmm. you know. So we've been really focused on maintaining the quality of our housing stock in Douglas County. Mm -hmm. um, I would just say, based on my impression, you know, and kind of our firsthand experience being out in the field, you know, we see that our housing stock is good. You know, it's stable. Overall, we've got good quality housing. Mm -hmm. Some of it may be a little older. Some of it may be a little smaller, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but overall, we've got good quality housing stock in Douglas County. So we're very focused on maintaining the quality of that because we've heard from our community that residents are really attached to their neighborhoods. Right. But the need is, is kind of, there's a huge need in Douglas County for not just only affordable housing, just housing, period. Sure. I mean, the rental side of oh, things yeah. have kind of skyrocketed. I mean, so, so that... One of the reasons I think that you hear the community talk about how fast we're growing and how much growth is because we have planned for areas of growth that are mostly along our corridors. Mm -hmm. So mostly along Highway 92, mostly along Veterans Memorial Highway, mostly along State Route 5. Mm -hmm. And part of that is a deliberate attempt in our, in our balanced growth policies to kind of preserve our established, stable, single-family neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you know, and push a lot of the new growth and development to our corridors. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where a lot of you drive, right? right? That's where a lot of people are kind of like, you know, traveling, you know, for work and for school and for things like that. So you see a lot of development happening on our corridors, mm -hmm. and maybe that lends itself somewhat to the perception mm -hmm. that there's a lot of development going on because we've put that in areas that are kind of along our state routes, you know, that have the infrastructure to support new development. Um, that's where we are seeing the housing that's a little bit higher density, you know, mm -hmm. that's a little bit of a different housing product. Um, but a lot of that is because we want to kind of focus on those areas of our community that are the, the safe, secure, stable, single family neighborhoods and preserve those, mm -hmm. you know, because that's the feedback that we've heard from our residents. So, so let's talk, and I, I thought we'll get ready to wrap this all up though. Talk more about, let's say District 4. <laughs> How, what, what, what's the expectation in District 4 as it is in District 1? I mean, there each characteristics in each one of the districts are different. And so let's start with District 4. Right. With, from a plan development perspective, what can we anticipate in District 4? What we can look for? I know I'm talking about Mark's district, but, <laughs> but just, just curious, you know. So one of the big things that we focus on in District 4 is that a lot of that area is taken up by the Dog River Watershed Protection Area, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it may look like low-density development. It mm -hmm. may look like there's not a lot going on out there. 
but the underlying preservation of environmental quality is huge, mm -hmm. right? I cannot, uh, I cannot sort of emphasize how important it is that we preserve our water quality and quantity, you know, for mm -hmm. Douglas County, for Metro Atlanta overall. Right, and so when you kind of start to think that so much of District 4 drains into the Dog River Reservoir, and that mm -hmm. is our drinking water reservoir for mm -hmm. Douglas County, mm -hmm. you can you can kind of fix a lot of things through planning and zoning. But if you don't have, you know, a safe, stable, secure water supply, mm -hmm. that it's, makes it hard. Yes. Right. Yes. So <laughs> yes. I have a lot of respect for what our colleagues at the Water and Sewer Authority are doing mm -hmm. to ensure you know, the water quality and quantity both in the Dog River Reservoir and then the Bear Creek Reservoir actually still backs up you know, the Dog River mm -hmm. Reservoir. So I think it's important to kind of keep an eye on the fact that, you know, we're not just always talking about building things, we're talking about preserving things, and we're talking about keeping that balance between building and environmental quality. So when I think District 4, that's the first thing that comes to mind, you know, is the, the fact that a lot of what is influencing development in that area is solidly balancing the environmental quality that we need to preserve our drinking water supply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we do have some opportunities out there, you know, um, where we have seen economic development of a different form. Mm -hmm. So it's not as much kind of industrial commercial. It's a lot of the rural residential, the resort conservation, you know, mm -hmm. so we've seen a lot of recreational uses, sporting uses and things like that mm -hmm. start to come online. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think that offers a very different kind of economic development that mm -hmm. still makes Douglas County a destination for wellness and agritourism and things of that nature. And that's where it gets really tricky though, to try to make sure we preserve kind of Douglas County as to who, who mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. versus develop. It, it all has to make yeah. sense. It has to come together. And that, again, we go into that balancing yeah. act, you know, so talk about capital improvement, though. I mean, let, let's 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 touch on that. And then we, we're going to start wrapping this all up. This has really good, been good, though. So well, I'm really excited because um, there is a capital, um, we call it a CIP, mm -hmm. but it's a capital improvement plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we um, went and surveyed all the departments and mm -hmm. we got a list of all of the um, the assets that are needed mm -hmm. by each um, department. Mm -hmm. It's about two hundred million dollars. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. But right, okay. but that's a start. But that's good. That's yes. what a plan is. And yes. then from there, what we do is look at by year and mm -hmm. funding source. Mm -hmm. So um, in a couple of weeks, we'll be presenting it to the board, providing some SPLOS eligible mm -hmm. um, projects so we can get that approved mm -hmm. and move on with our um, the SPLOS. But um, our CIP, the main funding source is SPLOS. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, um, estimated about $115 million mm -hmm. will come in um, from the SPLOS revenue. And then but the you're already falling short, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is true. You're already falling short, though. Right. But, but go so ahead. Go ahead. It'll be probably over time, but yes. as over time, we're updating the cost, too. So um, I guess the main is SPLOS projects and things that are, we call them shovel ready, mm -hmm. that we can just get out the door. But since we have the money um, now doing, you know, with the SPLOS and if we bond, so we're looking for projects that are shovel ready mm -hmm. so we can start and the projects that are not, those are the ones that will um, do our due diligence on that and then hopefully a funding source will right. come up. But, but, but what I heard though, we, we're, we, we've got possibly a $2 million, I mean, excuse me, a $200 million potential uh, capital improvement plan. Yes. But we probably only looking at about half of that to that, kind of come in. That's to, true, and, yes. And it's one of those like, okay, uh, the needs are great <laughs> yeah. and the wants are great, but at the end of the day, the question is how do you fund it? How do you get there? And, and we're at least, I, I'm, I'm proud of this board, at least we, we try to strategically oh, get there. Yeah. We try to balance, you know, because it can't just go all in one bucket and that's it or go in one direction. And then we, we mess up truly the characteristics of Douglas County. Mm -hmm. So it's a balancing act. So we, well, we take you got a hard job. Yes. You got to prioritize. I'm just yes. going to give yes. you here, the, here it is. the list and say, well, I know. I know. I'll take I know. the notes and prioritize. I know. Yeah. I know. That's so, the hard part. I know. Because everybody's needs, when you hear, you're like, yes, that, you know, yes. that is a true need. And, mm -hmm. you know, and to move the county forward, but right. you can't right. do it all. Yeah. And I think the county will move forward oh, with yeah. or without. That is true. I mean, not that they build, they will come or run the water line and the sewer line and they will, you know, show up, but it's, 
we are part of a bigger picture, a, part of a, a bigger regional picture. picture. Absolutely. So with that, I mean, what more can you say other than either plan and yeah. balance the growth and do the right thing, mm -hmm. or don't plan and you'll get what they give you? Because mm. they're going to come. They're going to come. Right. <laughs> they're going to come. Ready or not. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah so, so those developers and, and those who are looking to make their dreams come true, they will come. But is it what we want? And this is where we're going. Uh, but if they don't, if we can't get the community to come and be a part of it by having the conversations early. And Allison, I, I, I truly appreciate you going out in the community. We've got a couple of mm -hmm. outings that we're dealing with and, and trying to have that conversation with the general public. Right. And I think most of the commissioners are people oriented and community oriented and want to know and hear from them. Right. Right. But, I would agree. I would want the community to know that like, yes. they are empowered to, yes. to direct this, this decision making process. Right. And I do think that Douglas County gives people an extraordinary amount of access to the process. You know, and I find that to be very, very gratifying, you know, that we do have the ability to kind of meet, you know, one on one face to face and hear from our citizens. And I think we're very responsive, you know, in many ways to kind of what they're sharing with us. But I also know that, you know, it's, it's a heavy lift to ask people to come out and do this. I right? know. You know, I think that, you know, we just want people to kind of know that we're always kind of responsive, you know, to hearing that and moving it forward and you know I mean to your point you know when folks ask about Douglas County and the future of Douglas County I my response is always that because we are part you know of a major metropolitan area we're, we're, we're gonna be doing okay yes. in terms of growth and economic development and opportunities you know going forward mm -hmm. you know there are places in the state that you know my colleague might have the exact same title that I have but they're m not planning for growth they're planning for decline mm -hmm. yes. right they are they are planning for loss mm -hmm. of population they are planning for loss of jobs they don't have economic development um, so when I compare what they do and what I do I would rather have my challenges right right, right. than some of what their challenges are um, I, I, I love know, a so challenge I hope that people feel good about <laughs> yes. you know the challenges and the opportunities you know, that we have here because right. it could be a very different picture, right? Yes. I think we can't lose sight of that. And I think the citizens really, you know, do need to feel empowered, you know, to kind of oh, get yeah. involved, you know, and help drive, you know, some of this decision making. And get it's involved. exciting when they're involved too, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. And, and yes. sometimes they see things that you don't, you can be I get at that the wow same. factor. No, yes. Yeah. I, so, yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I get the wild factors from time to time and listen to them like, oh, I never thought about right. that. Like, yeah. okay, let me let me go back and, and look at that mm -hmm. again and, and see it from that, that point of view, but never thought about it like right. that. That's why I love going to the various conventions and mm -hmm. ACCG conventions oh, and all yeah. that. Because you, when you hear all the counties and yeah. townships and everything else have that conversation, mm -hmm. it becomes very interesting yeah. to say, you balanced it off of that, right? <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> we're struggling with we got exactly. this, you know. So, okay, so we're gonna wrap this all up. And, and let me first of all thank you, ladies, for just coming in and willing to have this conversation with me and talk about the various growth and, and finances and everything that goes on here in Douglas County. That we're really doing well. I think we're really doing well. Uh, is there is there room for growth? Yes, not just growth, but I'm just saying for us to get better at what we're doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, we just need the community to get engaged. So if you had this opportunity now to, to kind of your closing remarks to say to the community, kind of here's a one or two things that I want you to really do and engage with and be a part of, tell the viewers uh, of District Dialogue what that is, and this will be your closing statement as to finances and planning and development. So mine is the start of everything, and that's the budget. Mm -hmm. Um, the 2024 um, budget. Um, October is when um, the presentations with the um, board and that's when the citizens um, can be involved and ask for detailed um, line items for each department's budget and um, you can compare for the years and just take a look at mm -hmm. it and if you identify something or if you have a question then come to the um, Board of Commissioners meeting or um, you can contact um, finance. But it's definitely to get involved with the budget process because to me that starts everything. Follow the dollar. Yes. <laughs> Follow the dollar. <laughs> that is true. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Yeah, so what I would say, I think anybody who knows me, anybody who talks to me knows that I love to talk about planning and zoning, right? Yes, now, she does. Some folks can take <laughs> it or leave it. I think I have the most interesting job in Douglas County. And I think citizens have questions mm -hmm. about development. They have questions about planning. Yeah. Um, so I would just say, I love talking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Call me, 
email me, set up a time to come in and sit and talk with me, you know, and I don't know how much more accessible we can make it. Right. I can't always promise that I'm going to give you the answer you want to hear, but I can promise you that I will always have a conversation with people. Um, invite me to come to your community group, invite mm -hmm. me to come to your church, invite mm -hmm. me to come to be a part of your school project. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, um, I would just echo, you know, what Rosalind and what Commissioner Mitchell have said, you know, sometimes I hear ideas, you know, from the community that I'm like, that's brilliant. You mm -hmm. know, I'm so glad that somebody took time to share that with me, right? Because it really does take everybody, you know, kind of engaging together to kind of, you know, move things forward. So, so I just appreciate the opportunity to be here today oh, to once is. again talk about <laughs> planning and zoning um, and, uh, and just hope that folks will reach out, right? Yeah. And just ask their questions. Don't think they can't yeah. get the answer because we can get the answer. And tell them how they can reach you guys when, when trying to find the information. I know the website is available and all that kind of good stuff. So share that. How, we, how can I contact uh, Allison and, uh, and uh, uh, Rosalind? Right. So, so on our website, right, the planning and zoning page of the website, you can find my phone number on there. And it's my direct number, right? Mm -hmm. So you can call my direct number. You can get my direct email off of the website. It's not going to send you to just some planning at douglascounty.org <laughs> right. or whatever our email <laughs> extension is, right? I mean, it's going to send you to my email. Um, address. So I would encourage you, you know, to call me, you know, or to email me. Um, our office is here in the courthouse. We're in the development services suite. Um, and I am in the office, you know, five days a week, mm -hmm. you know, eight-ish to five-ish, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of night meetings um, and a lot of after hours engagements, you know, but I'm here. I'm not working remotely. I am here in my office and I am glad for people to come, you know, and talk to great, me about great, that. So. Great, great. And ditto the same on um, the county's website under finance mm -hmm. and I'm at every board meeting. So if you see me, I'm approachable. Just come and we can talk numbers or I can provide you any documents to help your budget process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, again, thank you, ladies. I truly well, appreciate this. And I know the District Dialogue family appreciate you guys and job well done. That's all we ask is that you come and get the information. We have a plethora of information for you. You decide on what you want and what your needs are, and we're more than willing to give that to you. So with that being said, thank you again for tuning in to District Dialogue. I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Thank you.